the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Welcome back, everyone. We're here in New York City with The Cube. I'm John Furrier, your host. And this session, we're going to talk about observability. We're going to go deep. We're going to do a deep dive. We're here at the AWS Financial Services Symposium. Dan Nimish, great to be on theCUBE with Splunk, um, right. Director of Technical Advisory and Director of Observability. So, no, uh, no. Guys, we we got the players here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for, for, for the observability conversation. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Oh, our pleasure. Thank you for having us. So, so observability is the hottest topic right now, it's besides like governance, some of the data, AI stuff, but at the foundation level right now, cloud natives propelling the Gen AI movement. We all see that. That's the hype cycle. We're right now the meat and potatoes and the steak, the steak on the grill, so to speak, is where's the data, what's happening in the network, the observability, and it's changing. And you guys have been on the forefront of this with Splunk, you know, from log files in the early days to being part of every enterprise's fabric. Where are we right now with observability? What's the key um, trend that's, um, I won't say being retooled, but like being focused on in terms of managing observability so that the enterprises could be positioned to take advantage of the generative AI. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can share yeah, a couple yeah, of comments. Yeah, no. um, so, you know, first is the first disruptor that uh, really opened people's eyes around observability or introducing change was cloud, move to clouds. Um, so very, uh, as the architectures and infrastructures uh, supporting applications mm -hmm. move to cloud, it's introducing a change mm -hmm. um, in uh, how organizations build applications, how organizations run and operate those applications. And then more importantly, how organizations ensure resilience in that application experience. So I think that's the first. The second one, which I think AI is starting to introduce, yeah. is we're all coming back to the killer app again. <laughs> and every time there's a new killer app or a new generation of killer apps, it starts inspiring change in everything from how you architect those apps, but again, to how you drive resilience in a quality customer experience. Yeah, that's a great point. I I'd also say too that data is a big part of it, right? So when you look, when you look at observability, it's touching all the hot buttons. Yep. Security, user experience, new experiences that become expectations for this next generation. There's a lot going on. I mean, and, and I know that there's been discussions around like the network observability, mm -hmm. there's different layers. Take us through Take a minute to explain what is the current state of the art of observability, and, well, and, and how do we how do we start framing this? So there's a lot of different players out there and a lot of different technologies. But one of the things to start off with is the users themselves, real user experience, mm -hmm. real user monitoring. People forget that part of observability. Then there's things such as synthetics, the ability to monitor websites, APIs, yeah, and do it in an automatic fashion. Uh, so yeah, the APMs and the the metrics of the world get all the highlights, yeah. but those little things out there, this is important. Um, then you get into, of course, the uh, service analyzers, the ability to do application performance monitoring, and you get in infrastructure monitoring, all those things are nice, but play, putting that all together as one platform is actually what we call state of the art. As you mentioned network, that is something that's just important, and uh, Splunk is part of Cisco. Yeah. There's a lot of different network capabilities we have in there. We're going to do a whole rabbit hole discussion about a thousand eye, the Splunk, which I think I'm very bullish on. Just get it out there. Again, I keep saying that, I keep pounding the table. Someone Cisco would hear me, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, but, but, but I want to get your thoughts on, on of that concept of putting it all together. There's more to observe now. Yes. So the surface area and volume and diversity of signals. Yeah. Um, can you guys share your thoughts on what that, what that means and, and how that translates to how customers are thinking about architecting and, and deploying new, new solutions? Yeah, I think, I think actually one of the more exciting, when you talk state of the art or what are the trends that customers are really starting to lean into yeah. is as, a, as Splunk, I can't not talk about the data. <laughs> and actually, if you look at what's happening at the data level yeah. uh, of analytics is the initiative around open telemetry. Because you're absolutely right, the diversity of infrastructures, platforms, applications have exploded, and actually anticipating that explosion is what inspired the Cloud Native Compute Foundation to really uh, mature uh, open telemetry, which gives a high quality data source regardless of its source. And open telemetry also kind of vectors into the whole open source movement around where Gen AI developers with data is going on, all the open source models are coming in. There's a developer frenzy right now in open huge. source, huge. Yeah. The demand and the appetite to code with data 
is incredible. And the cloud scale is also causing some opportunities where, and challenges around how do you look at observability if you have now large scale connections? So uh, distributed tracing, distributed hybrid deployments, that's the new thing. Uh, we're talking about in the, in the morning, most applications that are in the financial services, they're not going to be 100% cloud. They're going to be sometimes on-prem, uh, a lot of it on cloud, depending on what the services are, and the ability to actually trace on different platforms, different clouds for that matter, hybrid clouds, that is going to be a new trend as time goes on. Guys, I want to get your thoughts, because we're bringing up, we're, get, we're getting deep here, and this is deep tech. It's important because traditionally we're seeing, I mean, you mentioned unified, which is a good concept we want to get into, but traditionally most enterprises have like all these different IT tools, right? And, and you bring up open telemetry, and the reason why it's popular is that you can have these agents that could span and generate data without having all these different tool sets. Can you guys share what the... Uh, pain is and suffering involved with having managing multiple tool sets versus saying using open telemetry to generate agents and data across absolutely yeah i mean common the pains of having to have when you have you know uh, multiple tools is one it's more expensive there's a high cost two when you're troubleshooting you get a sore neck because your swivel chair <laughs> you know you kind of look in between different solutions and three you're not able able to allow software to do the heavy lifting on the analytics to say not only this yeah. is a problem, where is the problem occurring and what's the cause of it? And so uh, when you can separate the quality data stream from the backend processing and actually make the telemetry open source, it, uh, it opens the door now for customers to have greater choice yeah. in how they want to process it. It also saves on cost because yeah. if you had to maintain multiple agents yeah. and multiple vendors at the same time, uh, the cost is going to be tremendous. Oh, yeah. And also the managing it. And I think ultimately, I think what people, what I hear people say is that, look, I want visibility. I got to have visibility in what's going yeah. on, yeah. number one. And then this other stuff, get rid of all that. So so that brings up a good point. You guys had um, the observability cloud. Amazon's got uh, CloudWatch. Absolutely. Okay, how does that all work together? Can you share your relationship with AWS? If I'm a customer... Okay, I buy into Open Telemetry because CNCF's really a big part of our audience and ecosystem. Been covering them for a long, since it's founded, um, and we see the benefits. But now I, I'm an enterprise. Yeah, I have some people that go to the shows. I get it. How do I get it going? Yeah, what's the, absolutely. What's the playbook. Yeah, I think the way to think of it is um, it's actually our step one with customers when they want to approve their observability practices. Take the data from AWS CloudWatch as kind of your tier one first data source. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tremendous information you can get from there. Then as you start looking at how you want to look at those custom apps or how you want to be able to trace activity that may not only be running on AWS, but out to other third parties or out to application workloads running on other infrastructures, then you can deploy open telemetry and then just bring all that data together in Splunk and see end to end what's happening. How could you got, scope the impact of what, what he's saying? Because if open telemetry becomes the industry standard and it looks like it's going to be yeah. that, on that track. Yeah, there's even um, a mainframe committee now. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the scope of the impact in the ecosystem for the technology ecosystem because no, the, Gen AI is essentially now a platform shift, okay? And yeah. everything's moving up the stack in terms of capabilities. More performance is accelerating from the bottom. The middle layer, data layer is going to, and software going to intertwine. Yep. More observabilities going to get smarter, faster, more visibility, and, and probably have agents in there too doing work. But the impact of the ecosystem, everyone has to play together because it's the platform. It makes interoperability more of a, a successful thing than it was in the past. Because if you got different agents and different vendors who hate, they didn't even like each other, aren't going to talk. <laughs> now they have to because they have the same standards. It also helps the customer because here's the thing. I could go from one vendor to another vendor. I don't have to worry about the actual collecting the data. I buy the, the software for what reason. It gives you the best performance, the best use, the, use, the best cost, all those things all together. Which in the past, it was like, okay, maybe I'll hedge my bets on two or three vendors because uh, that's the way we do it. Now, no, just choose one. If you don't like it, take it out. Bring the next one on because it's still the same agents. It's a changing world. Uh, look about scale. How big is how 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 important and how big does the scale factor in? Because some of these pipelines are petabytes. Absolutely. Talk about the scale, the impact of scale. Why does it matter? When does it matter? No, it's it's um, it's a great question, and it's uh, another trend that we've observed is 
understanding what does it mean to scale when you are uh, applying, you know, you're focused on an observability use case where A, yeah, I've got to scale my ability to get data in and process it. That's actually the easy one. Secondly, I've got to scale aligned to the economics of doing that. So a lot of the feature uh, sets that we focused on in our observability solution has been to help customers actually focus on optimizing, is that data necessary to accomplish what you want? Can you aggregate it? Can you filter it? Can you put it to a lower cost data store so that you can balance the challenges of technically gathering the data and processing it with the constraints people have on doing that at the right economics. We can I add to that? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So one yeah. of the things that people don't really realize is something called cardinality. So I'll give an example of that. <laughs> when I grab a metric, I get a timestamp, I get a key, and I get a value. Yeah. And maybe a, a name for it, a dimension we call it. Each one of those is what we call part of a cardinality. The thing is when you get into billions of these metrics, the cardinality explodes. Yeah. So or explodes, actually that explodes. Well, when that happens, you have to have the capability of handling that. So a lot of vendors, they struggle. A lot of open source stuff definitely struggles. So when you talk about observability, one of the things that people don't look at is not the number of petabytes that are coming in. What's the cardinality also? Yeah. Because if you can't store it in a way that matters, you can retrieve it, then you don't scale the retrieval. Yeah. And AI, we know eat storage for breakfast and lunch and dinner. You've got to feed the AI with the right data at the right time. This is, yep. this is where, I, I'm again, I'm, the open telemetry opened up a lot of kind of doors for me in my mind of questioning here because Savannah Peterson, who's on, uh, here with me today, was with Paul Gillen at reInvent, I think last year. They talked about observability, and one of the headlines on SiliconANGLE, I had to pull it up and look at it, is open telemetry promises the demise of commodified data work. I want to get your reaction to this. The adoption of open telemetry is going to allow developers to do more building of interesting analysis features rather than repeating commodified work. What do you, what's your reaction to that? Do you agree with that statement? I, th um, I think so. Does it help it developers? What's no. the developer impact? If, if you think about it, because the other movement has been around the maturity of DevOps, mm -hmm. meaning what does a day in the life of the developer look like and how do you provide a high quality developer experience? And so if developers are now more, you build it, you run it, yeah. they're going to first want to uh, leverage the same type of software they use in building their own software. So they like open source. Mm -hmm. And two, if that open source is of a high quality type and can be processed uh, effectively to solve the problems they have, then they are focused on actually delivering the value that their company wants them to deliver and not focus So they're on. more productive. So they're more productive. So, okay, exactly. so the, the, the headline yeah. essentially was referring to yeah. managing probably multiple tool sets or getting in the weeds on integration or- Or, or even sure. simplest possible thing, ever since the beginning of computing, getting data into a system <laughs> has been a, real, a big problem. So that's commoditized work. Every developer in the world has figured out ways of doing that and it changes from application to application. If you don't have to spend your time doing that and they can spend more time on analytics, and what the business is supposed to do, that goes away. Yeah. So that's what it comes out. I, lo I love this concept. So take, take, let's go through the scenario of AWS Splunk together, okay, working with the customers. Cloud check, public cloud, looking good. You guys have been there from the day one with Amazon, great relationship. Cloud scale, you guys done that. Splunk is A plus there, good. On-premise cloud operations, hybrid, looking good. You've been on-premise, check, A plus there. Edge is going to bring a lot of latency challenges to data movement. You mentioned yeah. data movement. Okay, how do you guys look at observability when you start bringing in edge devices in, whether it's handheld, wearables, IoT devices? You know, we're starting to get into that distributed computing full end-to-end -end paradigm. Certainly with Gen AI, we're hearing a lot more end-to-end. -end. How does that change the observability, if, if it does, is it, or is the game still the same on edge? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean from, from my view, Again, if, if, if you take a look at it from a data perspective, uh, the game's still the same. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, you have more things that are sending you data that yeah. actually could be vulnerable uh, for a number of reasons. So obviously, you have to develop yeah. a strategy around protecting those. Uh, and then, yes, uh, if the customer experience is going to be impacted by either um, uh, that edge processing yeah. or by a dependency on that edge processing, then again, you're going to want to have visibility into that so that you can proactively protect that customer experience. What about security on the edge too? It's obviously a big factor too. Yeah, and yep. that is something we're working on. Um, we actually created, created our edge processor last year. 
and that would be deployed in, let's say, traditional places to measure things like temperature, uh, humidity, usage, um, just things that are just part of IoT. Now, security has to be built in. <laughs> That's the main thing. You, yeah. you can't just have a vulnerability there and then have it propagate yeah. all the way to the servers. So Splunk, we as a security yeah. company, we do take care of that. Now, the problem comes in, what if you buy a third party version of this? Because anybody can sell these things. Mm-hmm. If they don't have that built in, the only way to protect it is to protect it at the central place. Because they can send you anything they want, and it could be malware. Yeah. But yeah. some some place in the central that has to be monitored and you know, dealt with. Guys, great conversation. Our last question is, obviously we're here in New York for AWS's Financial Services Symposium. Impact the finance, obviously. They're on the cutting edge. You know, one at one part of finance, they're spending much, as much money to get an edge as possible, go fast. Remember the old, you know, high frequency trading models to the slow banks, okay, who <laughs> are regulated and kind of they are, are. There's a lot of innovation. It's a cutthroat competitive market. Where's the advantage for the customers in working with AWS and Splunk as you guys roll out and, and try to prepare, get that foundation set for this big gen AI wave, which we all see coming. And it's a little hyped up right now, but you're starting to see practical solutions dropping in, but it's all gonna be grounded in large scale data management, large scale data, you know, uh, intelligence. Data will be at the center of it, which is what Splunk does. So I gave a talk a half hour ago on exact same question was asked. And I said, well, I can walk to downtown right now and get there in about an hour, or I could take a car and get there in five minutes. That's the same thing here. You don't need AWS and Splunk to solve these problems. But if you combine them together, this time to value increases. That's the main thing. So if you want to take days, months, years, yeah, anyone can do it. Yeah. But if you want to do it in a fast place way where vendors take care of some of the infrastructure and some of the other plumbing would yeah. call it, that's what AWS and Splunk can do. And everyone has their own unique environment too. They could yeah. walk a certain way or drive a certain way, take the subway. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So this is this is the key. Customization is coming. It's here. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to think too, what excites me most about uh, the AWS Splunk partnership and really just seeing how it's evolved yeah. with our joint customers is that we're focusing now more and more yeah. on protecting innovation velocity and driving a higher quality developer experience. And I think as uh, you know, we continue together to yeah. innovate more ways of doing that, it's going to help every financial service customer in New York. Uh, yeah. Well, you guys, you guys are in the center of the conversation. Our, our research team, we have conversations all the time around, and we've been promoting and, and reporting on re- research around this. We're in a systems revolution right now. It's a systems reboot. Yeah. Um, some call it the AI mainframe. I've heard that. We had a post on Silicon Angle on that today. But at the end of the day, it's still the same game. Compute, run some software. You got data in the equation. It's just going to look a little bit different, but it's still the same game. Data's at the center of it. You got software, and you got hardware. It's just distributed. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, and behind all of it, it remains the creativity, yeah. right? I mean, the innovation, the creativity, that's why we still love, I mean, I love where the, <laughs> the, the, the company name Splunk came from, right, is to go explore those caves. Yeah. And I think uh, this third wave of uh, AI is just opening up some really exciting new caves uh, yeah. for customers to go explore. Danny, thank you so much for coming on the Cube. Thanks for sharing the insight on the deep dive on observability. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. Stay with us. More action from fabulous program here today at Davis in New York City. We'll be right back.